Hello and welcome back to your 3ds Max tutorials. So we're getting close to, the, to our set of tutorials and I don't think that it would be complete without a little introduction to materials and uh, also rendering. So for this, for this tutorial I'm just going to give you a brief introduction to materials but something that I recommend that you play around with and experiment with yourself. It's the only way to become familiar with it. And so let me just give you a quick, a quick intro. Just gonna draw in a ground plane and a sphere. No, I'll draw in a teapot. A teapot has some nice curvature. And I'll take off this grid. Okay, so up until now we've been using the uh, the colours over here. Just it just simply changes the colour of the object, but it doesn't it, it's very um, very limited to how uh, to how it works. So we can't really change how shiny the object is or or that but 3ds max does have a massive library and a massive uh, it's a massive tool for for applying materials so if we simply press m on the keyboard now we're introduced to your material editor so on this window you're probably uh, you probably have a window that looks more like this and simply just right click on the window and you can you can change the number of uh, of sample windows that you have on display but for this tutorial, I'm just going to leave it on 3 by 2 And so let me see what we have. So we have our materials, and below here we have a set of parameters. Now it may seem a little bit daunting at first, but uh, it's, pretty, it's pretty straightforward uh, once you get in and, and start messing about with it. So, below here we have some, uh, some parameters that we can adjust. So by default we're on blin, we can change this if we like, but I'm just going to leave it on blin for now. Again, I'm just uh, introducing you to it. We can change the wire to a wireframe. If we actually double click on that uh, on the material, it magnifies that window so you can see a little bit clearer um, what's what's happening to that to that object. That's particularly useful when you have a large number of sample windows on display. So below this uh, this this area, we have we can change it to wireframe as I said, and we have faceted. But we'll just leave it as it is for now. Uh, by default, we have our ambient and diffuse uh, locked. We can unlock that, and simply what that does is, when we change one color, then the uh, then if we change the color of the ambient, then the diffuse will uh, will update with that. And we can also lock the specular level with uh, with uh, with our diffuse. So all three um, so all three colors. Uh, are the exact same and um, so let me just show you what happens here so if we go to our ambient we can we can change change that uh, color we can drag anywhere around this um this color window we can adjust the hue and we can adjust the blackness it's pretty pretty straightforward pretty self-explanatory and we can also adjust the the darkness and lightness of that color this is more of the the whiteness and then below here with the value, we can uh, we can darken it even even more, and lighten it up. Also, you can adjust any of these sliders to suit yourself, and you can if you have the RGB values at hand, you can input those manually. Okay, so that's a nice color blue. We'll go with that, and as you can see, this is a pretty matte uh, matte uh, finish. So let's go and increase our specular level. So if we increase this like so, then we can see now our object is starting to have a bit of depth. The, the finish is, is a little bit more, uh, has some more tone to it. We can see the shadows. And if we increase the glossiness, well then this, uh, this um, ray of light which is beamed onto our object, which is reflected from our, uh, onto our object, is um, it becomes much narrower. So obviously, the, the glossier that is, the smaller that point is going to be. And what else have we got here on this? The soften. I would I wouldn't recommend playing around too much with that. I leave that um, by as default. But you can you can suit yourself. Self illumination. Self illumination pretty much means that it's it's going to uh, light up itself from the inside. So the shadows that you, that you can see right now will uh, will disappear. I will just show you that, the self-illumination, we can actually use a picker, we can use this uh, sample picker and we can actually pick any colour from anywhere on the, um, 
on on the object on on, the, on your screen sorry excuse me so you can pick that object so i just picked that little red x we can pick the blue from here and press ok and you can see that the shadows have, have, have pretty much gone and the, it's it's really lit from the inside from the inside out let's turn off that self illumination for now and then and uh, the opacity then is is how clear or unclear, how uh, transparent the object is so we can ramp that down and now we can see our object is now becoming transparent okay well we leave that up to, to full blast so we can see it uh, see it clearly okay so you've picked the color that you like and the finish and the shine and you want to add it to your object so let me just maximize this viewport so you can see what's happening a little bit clearer so let's say we want this teapot to be this nice color uh, this nice color blue because this is selected, if I zoom in here, you can see this little, uh, this little window, this little icon we has, has a, a green box. If I select away from, uh, from the object, so no objects are selected, then this becomes uh, grayed out. So it's going to highlight the object and then assign material to selection. And now that nice blue material has been added to the scene. Now, if we wanted, if we were happy with the, the glossiness and the specular level, but we wanted to change the color, what we can do is we can take this, drag it, and drop it. So now we have an exact copy. But take note that the name also moves with it. So here's 01 default, 01 default, and 03 default. So 02 default has been replaced. So I would recommend to get into the habit of naming your materials as you go. So this is my blue. And for this material, I'm just gonna change the color. Just gonna bring it over here to get a nice pinky color, that's fine. And I'm gonna change this name to my pink. And now I can take that and drag it and drop it onto, the, uh, onto my scene. If I didn't do that, if I if I uh, copy the pink, so see, you can see now the name has moved with it. And if I take a sphere, drop that in. And now if I take this material and drop it onto the sphere, we, we now have a conflict. A material with the same name already exists, it already exists in the scene. Do you want to replace it or rename the material? So you can replace it or rename the material. And you can rename it in here. Um, so we can call it my pink 2. Oh, sorry, excuse me. My pink too. So now we have the same material with a different name, and it is no, there's no conflict. Okay, so I can take this and delete it out of our scene. So how does this? Anything else in here that I can run through for now? I suppose we could. You can go through the sample um, object. So it can be a square, square shaped object or cylindrical. So it depends on the object that you're applying the material to. And what else have we got that would be of use? Okay, so we have this little, this little globe with a little box beside it. And if you click on that, well, this is pretty self-explanatory, but it's pretty much all of the, uh, the material options that you can edit. But again, I'm just gonna leave it as default for now. Okay, one more thing that I might just run through, but I recommend that you experiment with it yourself. So here we have some maps. So again, the ambient and diffuse color is the main color of your object. And then you can go through, you can add bump, and reflection. And so, yeah, I'm not gonna play, I'm not gonna go into that too much, but I recommend that you experiment with it. One more thing, if I go over here, then there's a, some, lot of, some built in materials that you can edit and that you can use to your advantage. And in the next tutorial, I'm going to go through some, some rendering, uh, some rendering uh, options. By default, if I hold Shift and Q, so this is the, the, the default renderer. And it's a very fast renderer. As you can see, it's pretty, pretty instant. But the quality is not there. But in our next tutorial, I'm going to go through that. And when we, when we are dealing with, um, with rendering options, we can also add in some, uh, some extra materials through the use of Mental Ray. Okay, so I hope you can get some use out of that. And I'll see you in the next tutorial.